today in this talk, I am going to cover why customizing fields is important in your Strapi application. And then I am going to do a step-by-step -step guide in order to change a specific field in the content manager. So why customizing field is important? Because it allows us to improve the content editing experience. Uh, it also allows us to have a nicer display for exi existing types by filling the gap between the UI and the data stored in the database. So what we are going to do is that we are going to create a Swapy application and we are going to build a custom renderer for the JSON field in order to display a map instead of the default input. Before we start, I have already created a Swapy application using the latest version, which is the V4, and also a Swapy plugin, which is called the map, map field, as well as a React map component that we are going to use in order to change the JSON field. So let's dive into the um, into the code. So the first thing I am going to do is that I am going to uh, to to create a new collection type using the CLI. So the command is yarn strapy generate. I am choosing the content type op option and I am choosing to call it dummy. Okay, singular name. I am going to choose collection type. I don't need draft and publish. And I am going to add some attributes. The first attribute I am going to add um, is going to be called location. And this is the one that we are going to use in order to change the default JSON input in the administration panel. So, okay, I am choosing it to be a JSON and I am going to, to add another JSON field and that is going to be called JSON. So we can clearly see the difference between replacing all the existing type in this Rappi uh, admin panel and a specific one. I don't need to add another attribute. I need to create a new API and it's going to be called dummy. I am bootstrapping everything. And now if I go back to my navigator, uh, I can see that I have a collection type called dummy. And if I try to create a new entry, uh, I can see that I have the two default JSON inputs. That are displayed. So, what I am going to do first um, is to uh, add a new field type um, to my project. Okay, so this new field type uh, is going to is going to be. So basically, I am using the register lifecycle of the of my plugin entry point, and I am going to use the add fields API in order to change all JSON fields. So here we can see that. Uh, this API takes only one argument, which is an object, and the object needs to have two keys. Uh, the first one is a type, so the type you want to add or to, to change in your uh, application. And the other key, which is the, um, the React component that you want to, to add to your project. So here I am adding the, the map input component, and we're going to see what this input does, basically. So as I said, this input, I already created it. Um, and like all inputs in Strapi, when you add a new field, um, it, it receives as prop uh, an Intel label, which is uh, the definition of a label, a translated label, a name, a non change function, and a value. And what I am doing, the, and what I am doing here is that I am creating a new function called handle change. Um, this is one that this is the one that is going to be used in order to to store the, the value of, um, of the marker the user is going to, to select on the map. And I am returning you know, a label. I am using all the components from the design system. I am returning a, a label. And then this is the, my map. It's, uh, I am using React Map Gel in order to do that. This part is not the most interesting part, so this is why you know, I'm covering it like really fast. And what it does in my Strapi project, as you can see, is that it's changing all the JSON fields by a map field, basically. But what we want to do now is to be able to set which field we want to change. What I'm going to do is that I am going to add some information in my schema.json file. Here, in my attribute definition, uh, I am allowed to add a new property, which is called plugin option. And this property is available for plugin. Uh, for instance, the internationalization plugin is using this property in order to, to tell which fields are localized and which fields aren't. And we are going to use the same logic in order to, to specify which fields we are going to use 
the map and which fields are not going to use the map. Here, I am saying that uh, within the plugin option, this is the name of my plugin, it's called map field. And I am going to say that for this specific field, the location one is going to be enabled. And for the other one, since I don't want it, uh, I won't enable it. Then going back to the entry point of my plugin, the Fontaine file, Instead of replacing all the JSON field, what I am going to do is that I am going to add a new type that is going to be used only for the admin, which is going to be map field, for instance. The naming there doesn't really matter as long as you stay consistent in your code base with that. So I am saving that. And if we go back there, we can see that we still have the two default JSON inputs that are, um, that are displayed. The second part now is that we're going to use an experimental API that is not documented um, for the content manager that allows us to change the layout of the content manager. So the layout of the content manager is the object that defines what the content manager is going to display, all the inputs, their type, their validation, and everything. So we are going to use that API in order to change the type of uh, our field, basically. So in order to do so, we need to use the bootstrap lifecycle. So the bootstrap lifecycle is run uh, after all plugins are being loaded. And within this lifecycle, I am able to call the register hook API. It takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the, pool, the hook that we want to hook in. And the second one is the function, the hook function that we are going to, to develop right now. This hook um, takes as an argument an object uh, which has two, two keys, the layout, which, has just, which I have just talked about, and the, the one which is the query. The query is the query parameters that are on, in the URL of the content manager. Because some other plugin, like the internationalization plugin, is using uh, the query in order to know uh, which local, for instance, is being displayed. And what the hook needs to do uh, must do, in fact, it must do, it must return the same object, which has the query and the layout, but you can mutate uh, this object, basically. So, what I am going to do first is that I am going to create an object, um, which is going to be called um, enhance layout, for instance. Enhance layout. And in this object, I am going to spread the layout of my content type, so again, the layout of the content type is the, is the object that tells the content manager what it needs to display, basically. And I am going to mutate the edit one. Okay, now I need to create that constant layout, and I am going to pass the layout of my content type up layouts.edit. I am going to receive the layout as an argument as well. And here I am going to map. So the layout here um, is an array of array of inputs, basically, of objects. And each object of that array defines uh, what an input is. So here I am going to retrieve a row of each input and I am going to mutate that row. So now in my uh, in my reduce function, I have access to the field. So I am able to retrieve to retrieve the option that I have defined um, in my schema file. So I am going to create uh, a new constant which is going to be called as map field enable, for instance. And I am going to return to retrieve that option from the field and its field schema key plugin options uh, map field. That enable, and I am going to say that if it's not enabled, I am just going to return my accumulator and my fill. Otherwise, I am returning the accumulator, but my mutated fill. Here is going to be fill schema, and here the type. I am going to change it to the type I have just added here, which is map field. Okay, so here I have the enhance layout, and right now I am still returning the default layout. Uh, so what I am going to do is, again, I am going to spread the layout, and I am going to change the layout of the content type. And I am going 
going to say that the layouts now is the enhanced layout. And if I go back there, I can see that I have my my JSON field, but now it is displayed as a map. I am able to select a location on the map. I'm able to save it. And have, if I disable the option in my schema, I will still be able to use the default uh, JSON input. So now I'm reloading. And now you can see that I am using the default JSON input and the value that are set there are stored in the database is the value that I have just entered using my map and I can re-enable it back. And if I go back to my entry, I'm still able to, to see my map and to change my marker in order to, to enter a new location. Thank you for watching. <laughs>